my area to speak on is on the power of the Word of God and what the Word of God does to bring revelation into you. So, would you turn with me to the book of Proverbs? Let me, let me read this for you. Proverbs chapter 4, Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 20. My child, be attentive to my words. Incline your ear to my saying. Do not let them escape from your sight. Keep them within your heart. For they are life to those who find them and healing to all their flesh. I'm going to repeat that to you. And I want you to pick up some very important keys about the Word of God. My child, be attentive to my words. Incline your ear to my saying. Do not let them escape from your sight. Keep them within your heart, for they are life to those who find them. Say that with me. Life to those who find them. And healing to all their flesh. And healing to all their flesh. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 21, 22. For they are life to those who find them and healing to all their flesh. The Word of God is a powerful tool to bring life, to bring healing. Say amen. amen. A lot of people come to Divine Retreat Center because they are looking for healing. And they think that it is some magic that brings about the healing. Let me assure you, friends, it's no magic. It is not the power of the preacher or power of certain individuals that bring about the healing. The healing comes through the word of God. The healing comes through the word of God. And that is why you notice that the word of God is proclaimed every time. The every time the word of God is proclaimed and then followed by prayer for healing. Without the word of God, there is no healing. Because the word of God has got life. Say life. life. This is just not ink written on paper. For a lot of people, they would prepare, prepare an easy way that somebody would come and lay hands over them and pray over them and impart the healing. But it doesn't work like that. Healing comes through the word of God because the word of God is life. Life to those who find it. Life and it brings healing. Turn with me to Psalms. The book of Psalms 107. Psalm 107 verse 17 to 20. The psalmist says, Some were sick through their sinful ways and because of their iniquities endured affliction. It says that some people were sick because of their sinful ways and because of their iniquities they endured affliction. They loathed any kind of food and they drew near to the gates of death. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble. Verse 19. Verse 19. Then they cried out to their Lord in their trouble and he saved them from their distress. How did he save them? Verse 20 tells you. Verse 20. He sent out his word and healed them. How did he do that? He sent out his word and healed them and delivered them from destruction. The word of God has the power to bring healing. The word of God has power to bring restoration. How is this possible? Because it is God's own living word. It's just not ink written on paper. It is the power of the living word. How did God create the universe? How did God create the, the sun, the moon, the stars? He spoke it into being through his words, through his words. Therefore, your words have power. Your words have power. Of all the creatures that are alive, you and I share in the authority of speech. Speech. Say speech. The parrot is the closest to us, but the parrot can only copy. Parrot cannot speak. Speech is authority. 
they, your and I ability to co have speech, to communicate, is authority. Speech is authority. And therefore, when God speaks, it has authority. So when God says, let there be light, there was light. Let there be water, let, there was water. That is the power of speech. And you and I share in that authority of that speech. And God spoke the world into being, and it is God's word that brings this healing. Not some magical force, not some spiritual force, but it is the word of God. And unfortunately, many Catholics do not know the word of God. Many Catholics have no idea what the word of God says. Why? Why? Very simple reason. Why? Because the Catholic does not read. The Catholic does not read the Bible. Catholic does not read the Bible. Do you eat, friends? Do you eat? How often you eat? One day, how many times you eat? Four times, five times. Some of you are saying five times. Huh? Three times. Three or four times. You eat three or four times. If you don't eat three or four times, will you get hungry? Yes? Before how long you will get hungry? Before how long? Let's say you had breakfast at 8 o'clock in the morning. Before how long your stomach will start roaring? Some of you, one hour. Some of you, half an hour, 30 minutes, your stomach is already roaring. Your stomach is telling you, feed me, feed me. This is for your physical body. Is it not right? And after that, you, you take it for one hour, maybe one and a half hours. After two hours, you go and look for something to eat, to sustain your body. The physical food sustains your physical body. How much more spiritual food? How much more spiritual food? The average Catholic, the average Catholic listens to the word of God once a week on a Sunday. The average Catholic, not you, huh? You are very good. Yeah, praise the Lord. You are very good Catholic, so you listen to the word of God every time. But the average Catholic listens to the word of God only once a week on Sunday. For how many minutes? I don't know about India, okay? But in Malaysia, where I come from, in Malaysia, if the priest gives a sermon more than 20 minutes, the Catholic is already looking at his watch in front of the priest. Only looking, Father, you're talking too much. Time to zip up and finish the mass very quick. So the Catholic is listening to the, the sermon, the word of God, for how long? 20 minutes. In India, how long? 20 to 30 minutes. 20 to 30 minutes. That is all. Five minutes. Some sermons are only five minutes. And that is his food for how long? One week. Seven days. That is his spiritual food for seven days. He doesn't eat anymore until the seven days. Can you imagine the state of his spiritual life? He's dead. Literally, he's dead. By the time he comes for Eucharist the next Sunday, his spiritual, his spirit man is dying. Already dying because seven days he has starved his spirit man. Starve the spirit man. If you starve, if you do that to your own body, your body within two days will shut down. Your faculties will start shutting down. Is that true? And then pretty soon your diabetes will start coming up. Your high blood pressure will start coming up. And then you'll feel dizzy. You want to faint. All those kind of things. Can you imagine your spirit man? Can you imagine your spirit man? When you starve your spirit man for one whole week without giving that spirit man of yours the word of God? The word of God is source of life. It's source of life. We live on everything except the word of God. Yes, sir. I agree. The Eucharist is very important. But you must remember, at every Eucharistic celebration, there are two tables. Not one table. This is the table of the bread. This is the table of the word. 
after the table of the word then we go to the table of the bread both tables are equally important the document of the church called day verbum day verbum says that both both are important the word is equally as important as the eucharist some people think they just take the eucharist alone is enough it is not enough you need the word of god you need the word of god why because the word of god has got power to transform you just as the eucharist has power to transform you the word of god has power to transform you how is this possible hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 what does it say the word of god is alive and active say this with me sharper than a two edged sword able to divide bone and marrow do you know how how slim it is how thin it is the line between the bone and the marrow yeah it is so close but the word has the power to divide between bone and marrow to divide spirit and soul that powerful the word of god it is just not ink on paper it is alive say alive, alive. it is active. active the word of god is alive and active and it needs to work in my life it needs the word needs to work in my life it's not matter of hearing the word there are a lot of people who hear the word but nothing happens it goes in one year and out the other year how do you know that try this huh go to your parish one sunday after mass is over go to the regular catholic bring a microphone and ask the catholic brother what was the reading just now in the mass excuse me brother what was the reading in the mass the catholic will say ah uh, ah uh, why ah uh? <laughs> i was not listening uh, you were not listening the word of god is so powerful so crucial and yet you were not listening remember that's the only word he will live for 7 days and even that he was not listening how can he survive no wonder the catholics are spiritually dead george gallop of the gallop polls called the catholic church a sleeping giant sleeping giant do you know why because all the catholics are physically sitting in the church but all of them are sleeping that is the only contribution the catholic makes to the church because he doesn't know the the word he's preaching in his own name he's speaking in his own name he's speaking in his own authority your authority has got no power your words cannot change anybody's life the word of god has got power to change life the word of god has the ability to transform life why because it is alive and active hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 to timothy chapter 3 verse 16 to timothy chapter 3 verse 16 it says this all scripture is inspired by god say amen, amen. all scripture is inspired by god is profitable is profitable for teaching for training for growing in righteousness it is profitable for teaching training for growing in righteousness why because all scripture is inspired by god the word inspired there comes from the original root word that means breathed by god that means scripture is just you know you know in in uh, some traditions and in some cultures 
in some religions they believe that their scripture came down came down descended from heaven so they received their scripture lock stock and barrel from heaven but not so with the catholic church not so with the bible not so with the bible the bible is written by human beings but inspired by the holy spirit that means the holy spirit was working through these individuals to write the word of god therefore the word of god is breathed by the holy spirit because it is breathed by the holy spirit the word of god is power again unlike our protestant brothers and sisters who believe sola scriptura that means only the word only the word the catholic church acknowledges that yes it is breathed by the spirit written by man but the one who has authority to interpret the word of god is the church the teaching authority of the church the magisterium so it is not by revelation so you cannot do inky pinky ponky pluk, open the bible and read have you heard that catholics do that yeah some catholics god speak to me pluk, and open the bible go and hang yourself oh must be a mistake then they pray lord speak to me open again pluk. what you need to do do it quickly oh must be wrong cannot be then they pray again lord speak to me pluk, open again why are you still hesitating do not play games with the bible the word of god is not magic the word of god is not magic it is breathed by the holy spirit so it is very important as catholics we need to memorize the word of god very important you need to memorize the word of god 2 timothy 3:16 all scripture is inspired by the holy spirit it's god through the holy spirit who breathed the scripture therefore the scripture has power the word of god has power power to bring life power to bring life so if you go to the doctor and you tell the doctor you are sick the doctor will give you some tablets to swallow is that correct some medicine that you need to swallow similarly when you are going through a struggle or a pain you need to swallow the tablet of the word of god you need to swallow the tablet of the word of god because the word of god will speak into that situation the word of god will speak into that situation transforming your mind transforming your mind this is why jesus said so clearly matthew chapter 4 verse 4 man does not live on idli and dosa alone amen say amen, amen. man lives on chapati and puri then man lives on say this with me man does not live hello come on loudly man does not live on bread alone but on every word that proceeds from the mouth of god man does not live on bread alone but on every word that proceeds that proceeds from the mouth of god you see if the word was plucked from somewhere in the air the word will have no power if you heard the word of a motivational guru called anthony robbins and you quoted that word the word will have no power say amen, amen. if you quoted the words of even the president of united states of america the word has no power to change your life why why because it is human words human words do not have the power to transform the life but god's word is different from human words god's word has the power and the authority to transform life 
Say amen. amen. And that is why out of your mouth must come out the word of God. How can the word of God come out of your mouth when there is no word of God in your head? The word of God must first be in your head before it can come out of your mouth. Then the word that proceeds out of the mouth of God will change the life. Will change the life. Let's say, okay, I don't know, most of you must be buried here, okay? But let me give you an analogy, okay? Brothers, don't get offended, okay? Let's say the women come back home, they are going for prayer meeting, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. And the husband doesn't come for any prayer meeting, doesn't come to any divine retreat center, doesn't come for any conversion. So the, the wife goes back home and tells the husband, you useless man, every day you're sitting at home drinking Johnny Walker, Jimmy Walker. You never come and pray with me. And the wife goes on, non-stop to the husband. You good for nothing husband. And she scolds him and she shouts at him. Will that change the man? No. Because she's using her own intellect. She's using her own words. Those words do not have power or authority to change somebody's life. But rather, if she speaks the word of God to the husband, that word of God that goes out of her mouth reaches to the heart of the husband and changes the heart of the husband. That is the power of the word of God. That is why it is important. How can you speak when you do not? No. How can you speak when you do not know the word of God? So what will you do? You will try to use your own wisdom, your own understanding, your own intellect, your own ability. And your own ability cannot touch the life of somebody else. Man does not live on but on, say every word, that comes, that proceeds from the mouth of God. This is very, very important. Now look at something with me, and I want you to capture this. Isaiah, turn with me to Isaiah, chapter 55, verse 11. Isaiah, chapter 55, verse 11. Have you got it? You need to see this for yourself. And I want you to, to capture this because this is the key to what God wants to do for your life. There are a lot of people, friends, who rather not know this. They just want somebody to come and lay hands over them and pray over them so that all their sickness will be gone. But they do not want to spend time reading the word. You know what happens when they start opening the Bible? They fall asleep. They go to sleep. After 30 minutes, they wake up. They wake up. Amen. They read nothing. They remember nothing. You got money in the bank? Do you have money in the bank? If you take your ATM card and you go and put it in the ATM machine for your bank account and you try to make a withdrawal, the money will only come out if there is money in the account. True or not? If there is no money in the account, what will come out? Nothing will come out. That's the problem. The Catholic today is trying to make withdrawal when he never made a deposit in the first place. Never made a deposit. He never read the Bible. He never memorized the scripture. Isaiah chapter 55, verse 11. Okay? Now, let's read verse 10 first, okay? For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do, do not return these there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word that goes out of my mouth, so shall my word that goes out of my mouth, it shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose 
and succeed in the thing I sent it to do. There are two keys here, two very important keys. And I want you to capture this. The two important keys are in the two last words. It says, it shall accomplish, say that. That which I purpose. Say accomplish. Accomplish means that it will fulfill. It will fulfill. So if God says, let the cancer be healed, what will happen? The cancer will be healed. If God says, the depression will be broken, what will happen? Depression will be broken. It shall accomplish. There is no if, there is no maybe, there is no but. It will do it. It will accomplish. Say accomplish. Not only will it accomplish, number two, it will succeed. Succeed. Say succeed. What is succeed? It comes from the root, root word success. Is that correct? That means whatever God sends it to do, there will be success. Have you tried again and again and there is only failure? Do you know why? Because there is no word of God. That is why no, no success. No word of God. The word of God will give you success. It will succeed. Not my words, huh? God himself speaks about his word. It will succeed in the very thing for which I sent it. 